Hello again, everybody. Barry Hyatt here in Scottsville at the University of Kentucky Extension Office with my good friend Janet Johnson. Of course, Janet is a huge Kentucky basketball fan. Yes, that is true, Barry. But let's talk a little <laughs> football for a second, well, okay? Yes, I mean, you have to give football its place in January. I you mean, do. even though the SEC tournament has kicked off, and who, well, how has it kicked off? Lots of teams playing extremely well. Mm -hmm. So yes. give the SEC its due in basketball that's as well. That's right, that's right. That's right. But the but Super Bowl, of course, is coming up. Big playoffs, the Super Bowl's coming up, and people love to eat during football games. You know, it's just mm -hmm. a passage. And so we're going to talk about a great soup. You can have simmering on the stove, nice. and you can get little bowls of soup as you're watching the game, mm -hmm. but you know, with each quarter or definitely halftime. So, yeah. so let's look at a variation of a chowder. And Barry, when you walked in, you said, oh, clam chowder. When people hear the <laughs> word chowder, they automatically think of a seafood chowder, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, well, sure. this is a good example of a vegetable chowder and it takes uh, in some great vegetables, even some, what I call some spring vegetables, mm -hmm. we're gonna call it colorful vegetables. Okay, that sounds So, good. of course, with any chowder, you're going to deal with a starchy vegetable, which mm -hmm. gives a thickness mm -hmm. to your chowder, mm -hmm. but also it's going to have a cream base, and we're gonna add that in just a moment cool. and get started. But what we wanna show people, Barry, is a point where we have actually done a little pre-prep mm -hmm. uh, as you were getting ready to film and got things started. And what you do is that you actually, for chowder, take a vegetable selection, mm -hmm. potatoes, and I use red potatoes so that you don't have to peel those potatoes, okay. and okay. they're really pretty, and some broccoli and carrots. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to add a touch of flavor, nothing is better than just a little bit of corn okay. to a chowder because it's a very thick, hearty soup. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say starchy, but... It, well, let's just say starch. It is. It adds a little texture too, doesn't it? It adds a little texture, yeah. yes. It's a very hearty soup. Mm -hmm. But corn in itself adds a touch of great flavor. Mm -hmm. Whether it's frozen corn or fresh corn, whatever you got. You can add canned corn, but I pulled just a little bit of frozen corn okay. out of the freezer. And I'm going to put about a half a cup in mm -hmm. along with broccoli, carrots, and potatoes. And all this is going to do is going to add a little more flavor, but it will add a little more color as well too. So we're going to add that. My dad is making corn chowder right now, which is basically corn and oh, potatoes. Wow. Yeah. No color with broccoli, but broccoli adds a great amount of color, but also some really great uh, flavor and vitamins too. But mm -hmm. we're just gonna say great flavor and color. That's all we're talking <laughs> about. Now, to make this, uh, again, thicker in terms of a chowder, mm -hmm. we're going to, after we have uh, basically let the vegetables kind of saute in mm -hmm. a couple of tablespoons of canola oil, olive oil. If you want to add a little flavor, you can add a little butter okay. there too. If you want to take some saturated fat out, go back to the canola oil and okay. use that. Okay. But you're basically just sauteing to soften all of the vegetables at mm -hmm. this point. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to be adding salt, pepper, and another flavoring agent. And uh, our recipe is saying Italian seasoning. Okay. Now if you find the basil, and some of those flavors a little bit more than you like, mm -hmm. then you could eliminate the Italian seasoning because it's only a half a teaspoon uh, or a little more. So you don't have to add Italian seasoning if okay. you don't want to. Okay. But I always like, and you know that I love seasoned pepper. Yes. I do. I love this guy. This guy adds a lot of great spices along with pepper. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful rub. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful flavor agent and it would be really good for this chowder. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put in a shake or two of seasoned salt, okay. half a teaspoon in terms of a measurement if you want to do that, or to taste. Right. We'll say that. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to add my favorite seasoned pepper, which is a coarse ground pepper with a little bit of dried sweet pepper. And you know we cook mm -hmm. with that a lot here on yes. NCTC. It's a wonder we it, have never sneezed before. I know uh, it, it it's great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a little of the Italian seasoning, just a tad, I may cut back just a little, but we're gonna see how that works out today. It also smells great, doesn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. Now, we're gonna add an extra step in that we're adding a little bit of flour over these vegetables. And okay. Barry, I'm gonna get you to just kinda of toss those vegetables okay, sure. around you know, three to four tablespoons, depending on your vegetables. And okay. this is going to, I'll let you kind of stir that around okay. and I'm gonna talk just a second. Sure. This adds a little bit of thickening coating. You know, you everyone knows that if you're making a gravy or you're mm -hmm. making any kind of roux or sauce, 
that you have flour that is actually mixed in a little bit of fat. Okay. And so we're kind of doing that step and coating the vegetables with this to give them a little bit of thickness. And you can immediately see this when, when you put flour on something. And we, we're kind of stirring that in with the seasonings. And I am so glad this is a deep dish because I'm not making a mess. No, you're not. And that's great. And one <laughs> needs to remember that when making these chowders you that go. you're going to be stirring yeah. and adding. I'm going to slip in here sure. right under your arm there. And then we're going to add about three and a half cups of chicken broth. Okay. And this, this is another great ingredient to cook with there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of up there with seasoned salt and seasoned pepper. Right. Have some chicken broth in your freezer. You can freeze this if okay. you want to get the large boxes. Okay. Now our recipe calls for three and a half cups and we're going to let this simmer in the chicken broth for about 15 minutes until our vegetables are a little tender. I don't okay. know that I've ever seen this in a, in a uh, box container before. Oh yeah, that's kind of the new way to buy okay. chicken broth now, okay. is in kind of the disposable types of things because okay. you can get the volume, of course, sure, sure. so you can buy more, but it, this just makes a wonderful broth. Now, again, we're going to turn up the heat and we're going to let this simmer and okay. I'll talk you through the other parts of the steps here. Of course, when we're adding the broccoli to um, the saute mixture, a lot of people will see recipes that say broccoli flour adds. Yes. Now, Yes. And do you know what that is, Barry, of course? It's, it's the smaller part of the head yes, of the broccoli. Yes, exactly. Yes. So we just want to make it clear that mm -hmm. this is a stalk. Mm -hmm. You buy a bunch mm -hmm. of broccoli, which is a group of stalks of mm -hmm. broccoli. Mm -hmm. And then you have to eliminate and start cutting off. And you can start with different yes. sides. That is right. a flower et. Yes. Or you actually can even go smaller, Barry. You can mm -hmm. keep cutting down. And these little florets can even become tinier. Since I've been doing this recipe yeah. segment with you, I know what flowerets are. Flowerets, and I know yes. what folding means. Well, there we go. Two things. Absolutely. So, <laughs> when you're when you're seeing a recipe like that, I know a lot of people sometimes think if I just cut off the head of that stalk of broccoli, that that's going to make it and it's too big, of, though. Yeah, it's too big, mm -hmm. and you kind of keep keep uh, making that go down, and you may even want to go to the smaller sizes as well too. So that's to something to remember. We're just stirring, and what okay. we're going to do is let this come back to a boil, okay. and uh, let this actually uh, go ahead and cook for about 15 minutes, and okay. we have that all done. And then we'll come back in a moment, and we'll show everyone this okay. great bowl of chowder that's going to be delicious. Sounds great. So we're going to let it simmer 15 minutes and then keep on going. It's time to go back to the game. If you're watching, you can put it on, let it simmer, go back and check out the plays and then come back for the final step there. Sounds great. Absolutely. See you back in a minute. Okay. It's been about 15 minutes and now the chowder is ready, I think, right, Janet? Yes, absolutely, Barry. What we've done, we've allowed it to simmer for 15 minutes and that allows the flour mixture that we just put on mm -hmm. to actually begin to thicken with the chicken broth. It okay. gives you a little bit of thickness. So now again, we're going to add that ingredient that makes these chowders so good and that's the dairy product. Okay. We're going to use half and half today and again, uh, depending on how much that you've used, it calls for like a half a cup. You may want to add a little more. Mm -hmm. and so we're going to add that to this chicken broth and we're going to remove it from the heat because if okay. we add the dairy product to a super hot liquid and allow it to boil, it tends to curdle sometimes. Okay. So okay. we want to get that off and we will just get the heat off and stir that in. But you can see, Barry, it gets that real mm -hmm. creamy, delicious, yeah. chowdery look to it and very, very good. You just kind of let that heat again to simmer mm -hmm. and then we're ready to actually serve up some of this delicious chowder. Wow. And it is delicious and, and a yummy, hearty soup that is just beautiful mm -hmm. and delicious for the it winter. Great, doesn't it? Yeah. And if you want a thicker soup, you can add more flour. Sure. to the vegetables. Sure. So keep that in mind and mm -hmm. as you experiment with the soup then you'll know to add a little bit more flour and if you find that you need a little more flour before you add your half and half take a little bit of your broth mix your flour with that then add that back. Okay. And that again keeps things uh, keeps your flour from bunching up and yeah. getting gummy and things like that. Right. So that's a little trick that most people know to do. So it just depends on how thin or how thick you like your chowder. Right, right. There's no answer and that is ready to serve and it is a delicious, warm, comforting 
Super Bowl soup. Yes, and even if you don't want to have it for the Super Bowl, you oh, can just absolutely. have it any cold night because we've had Eagle. quite a few of those. Oh, and one. we'll probably have a few more before, again, we so. tape next time, Barry. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Absolutely. Well, Janet, thanks so much for your time, and thank sure. you guys for watching. And, hey, if you want this recipe, it's very easy to get. All you have to do is email me at North Central. My email address at NCTC is barry.hyatt at nctc.com or simply go to our website, it's www.nctc.com, and we'll make sure that recipe is on there for you, along with the video portion as well. So that a lot sounds of, great. A lot of folks have been really excited about that. Now they can see the, Yay. visually see it, and then they can see the uh, the words on the recipe as well, and they Wonderful. know how to, how to put it all together. Thanks. That sounds great. Thanks Good job, you. Barry. No, 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 all you, all you. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Janet, and again, thank you guys for watching. Take care, we'll see you again real soon. Have a good rest of your day.